If you want to confidently lay down hi-hat grooves, you absolutely have to avoid getting your hands and sticks tangled up. Avoid this kind of stick clash right here with these two tricks, neither of which involves moving or raising your hi-hats or even playing open-handed for that matter. I'll show you exactly how to do it. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so glad you're hanging out today. I'm here to help you become the musician, the drummer that other people want to have in their band because you sound awesome on the drums. You sound awesome playing songs. And we do this by teaching you the core non-glamorous skills that get you results in the practice room faster. And hey, if you are a beginner drummer, and very much especially if you're a beginner drummer, I have a free gift for you today. I want you to be able to play anything you hear in your head. Is that, is that something you struggle with? Because I know I, I've struggled with that at, at some point where I have an idea and I have a hard time just making it happen on the kit. Well, in order to do that, you have to build four-way coordination because without four-way coordination, everything on the drums is difficult and tedious and it takes, long, it takes a long time to learn stuff. But with four-way coordination, everything is easy and everything's a lot more fun. This is what I want for you and this is gonna be really the key to unlocking freedom with your limbs. So I want you to grab my totally free guide. It's called 30 Days to Four-Way Rock Coordination. It's just a simple PDF guide. Something I hear from countless students who have worked through this is that once you get to like day 10, 12, 15, that's when the magic starts to happen and you really start to reap the rewards of practicing these grooves. And so be patient with it, work these day by day, and you will really start to unlock your limbs and be able to play what you hear in your head. So it's in the description below, total no brainer, go grab it. All right, on with today's lesson. So I personally struggled with this whole hi-hat crossover thing for years. It always frustrated me and I always wished I could just have the hi-hats over here on the right side of the kit. Um, and I guess you can if you have a remote hi-hat stand, but most of the time that just doesn't make sense either. And so we've got to deal with the hi-hat being here. And unless you want to play open-handed, you're having to cross over. And so we end up with this mess. And I remember just being so frustrated with the sticks running into each other, especially when playing uh, like a hi-hat 16th groove just because the stick ends up staying low when we're doing that. And it's even worse if you're doing like a, a shuffle groove. I remember trying to learn Rosanna for the first time in high school where the stick is living down here and I'm trying to play backbeats too, constantly running into that and it was driving me nuts. And I felt like I could never get my Rosanna shuffle feeling good. I could never get a hi-hat 16th groove feeling good. I was always afraid of the sticks hitting each other until I discovered this drummer, Aaron Sterling. Now, some of you may remember, I've talked about him before. He's my favorite drummer and I really learned a lot from him. He's sort of like my drumming mentor from afar. I've only met him once, but I've learned so much from him. He's a studio guy, fantastic drummer, probably my favorite living drummer. I learned a really cool tip from him that's actually helped a lot, and I'm gonna share that with you today that's gonna to really help free up what your hands are doing here. But before we get into that, that is our second trick. Our first trick, though, is actually the one that's gonna work for you most of the time, and you won't even have to do the Aaron Sterling trick, though I think it's really cool, and we're gonna talk about it. That's gonna be our second one. But first, what I want you to do is use the windshield wiper motion to keep your right hand out of the way. So. Most of the time, and most grooves that you're playing, especially if you're just doing eighth notes, you can actually keep your right hand out of the way of the left hand by lifting it out of the way. So let's say we're just playing a basic money beat. Well, if we're not playing loudly, we're really not running into any issues here. But as we start getting louder, let's say we want a loud back beat. Already, okay, there's a stick clash happening. Well, how can we avoid stick clash if we're needing to lift the left stick more? We can just lift the right stick more. So we could, we could go like this. Notice how I'm not hitting the hi-hats further. I'm just letting the stick float up a little more and then gently floating it back down. I'm not you know, slamming the hi-hat. I'm just giving the right stick some motion. So now there's all this space to work. I think it looks like windshield wipers on a car because you know how with windshield wipers, they're both you know, moving together and one's crossing the path of the other, but they never hit each other. Hopefully they're working right because one's always moving out of the way of the other. And that's the way that our hands need to be operating here where our right hand is always moving out of the way of the left hand so that there's never any stick clash happening. And when we're just talking backbeats like this, and especially if we're just doing eighth notes, this is a no-brainer, this works flawlessly. All you've gotta do is give that right hand some stick height. 
And this is something we've talked about in previous lessons on grip and around fluidity. When we talk about you know, floating around the kit, something that we do is we, we create artificial lift with the sticks, especially if you're playing on a low rebound surface like the floor tom, where we don't wanna just go and just throw it into the drum and then you know, end up with extra bounces we don't want, or we don't want the stick to just live down there, we wanna pull the sound out, so to speak. We wanna float the stick from drum to drum so we're essentially creating artificial rebound, and that artificial rebound, that back and forth motion, creates this whole windshield wiper motion, which also helps us play in time. Whenever you establish a motion, it helps you play in time more smoothly without having to think so hard about it. And even if you were doing 16th note timekeeping with the right hand, that same principle can still apply because you can still lift there. you can still lift up there and give it that extra space so that you can move the left hand up like that and have plenty of space for that left stick. So this works really well when the snare note, when that loud backbeat on the snare lines up with the beats. However, if left hand is wanting to play something more syncopated, what if, what if we're playing something like this? That can work, you can make it work like this, but what if, okay, what if right hand's playing 16th notes? Right there, you might, you might could have heard a little bit of clickage there. I can kind of make it work there, but I'm on the edge where I feel like, oh no, they're about to hit, there's about to be clickage, it's about to fall apart, what am I gonna do? And it causes me to not play as well because I'm worrying about it. And so when, we, when we're adding in snare accents where the left stick has to move like this, not on beats, so on syncopated offbeats. That's where we end up with the clickage still, no matter how far we try to lift this hand. But if we're playing 16s, we're having to be closer to the hi-hats on those offbeats because of the softer notes when we're doing molar. So there's kind of no way out here, we're stuck again. This is where the Aaron Sterling approach comes in. And this is why I present both of these methods to you because that, that first method works most of the time. When you're playing a simple, just backbeat groove, that's the way to go. But if you're running into trouble, we wanna employ the Aaron Sterling method, which is move your right hand out to here. Now, the important thing to keep in mind here is that he sits pretty close and he's got his hi-hats positioned roughly where mine are that allows him to do this without having to lean forward. And I know that part of my pitch here in this, this whole two trick thing is that you don't need to readjust where your hats are. And hopefully you don't. If you've got your hats in a good place where I'm, I'm always telling you to put your hi-hats, then you should be fine. You shouldn't need to make any adjustments. You should not need to raise them. You should not need to move them closer. You should be fine. But I am gonna describe a little bit of my exact location here in case you run into any trouble with this. What you should be able to do is instead of having your right hand right here, literally just move it to there. If you can look at the center of your snare, move that right hand until, ah, oh, I can see the middle of my snare now. And then give it a couple more inches just to be safe. So what you can do is actually hit your hi-hats out here on this edge, which is totally fine. There's no rule saying you've gotta hit the hats where the stick is perpendicular to the edge. That's, that doesn't have to be a thing. You can hit them like this at this slant where it's like a 45 degree angle and it sounds the same, it's perfectly fine. Exact same response, the only difference is we're reaching our arm out a little bit farther. So it might not be as comfortable for your arm, but if you're having to play accents on offbeats or you're doing a Rosanna shuffle, suddenly you're not having to worry about stick clash. And so it's worth moving your right arm out of the way. So again, start with where you're comfortable, look at the center of your snare, gradually glide out to here until you can see the center of your snare on the inside of your arm here, and then just give it a couple more inches and then just test it out and see, okay, is there enough clearage here, clearance, clearage, is there enough clearance here? Make sure the tip of the stick isn't close to hitting the shaft because if you're too close, then okay, you're gonna run into worse troubles than before. So make sure you've got enough space here. That kind of groove is so much easier when you've got the right hand out of the way. That helps a ton. And you can still play open notes, do whatever you want to on the hats, just with right hand out here. So a couple of quick notes about where my hi-hats are. I know I told you you shouldn't have to adjust yours. As long as you've got them in a good, comfortable spot already, you should be fine. But in case you're running into any issues, you feel like maybe you're not entirely sure about where your hats are, 
I like to have mine positioned where, so here's 12 o'clock on the snare, six o'clock, 12 o'clock, I'm facing this direction. We look at this, the hi-hats are at 10.30. They're at a 45 degree angle from the snare. This is not facing the kick drum. We're not talking about facing the kick drum. We're talking about the direction our torso, our chest, our shoulders are facing, which should be straight this way. We should not be facing our kick drum at the drum side. We should face toward our snare, which means the hi-hats are about this 45 degree angle to the left, 10.30. And so that allows us kind of that in-between spot where, you know, if the hi-hats were too far over this way, well, then we could only play using the Aaron Sterling method. Or if they were too far over this way, we wouldn't be able to make it work. But when you've got them diagonal like this, you can use both of these positions interchangeably. And that's what I found over the years where I can be equally comfortable right here as I can right here. I remember being taught at one point that you're supposed to have your right hand directly over your left when crossing over. And that's baloney, that, that never worked for me. Maybe it's worked for some drummers, never worked for me because then the hi-hats are having to be awkwardly far away. And so when I'm crossing over like this, this is what it looks like. There's no perfect crossover point when you're crossing over like this. That's why you're having to employ the windshield wiper motion because you don't want to have the hi-hats way out of reach. You can see how from directly overhead, mine are overlapping by about an inch. And as far as the height, they're a little above the H on a Vic Firth stick. If I set a stick right here, the edge of the hats are right at the T and the H, which is not very high. I mean, you can see that's, that's not very high. And whenever you're playing quick grooves, you don't wanna have the hats too high because you don't wanna be lifting your elbow like this. We're not trying to do the monkey arm hard rock drummer and play like this the whole time. That's crazy, we need to be nice and relaxed. And when you've got things nice and low and close to the other things, it makes this way easier, especially if you're playing quick 16th grooves like Rosanna. So if you need to adjust your hats a little bit to get them fine-tuned, okay, go for it. Hopefully you didn't even have to do that. Hopefully you can make this work either way. But the most important thing that I want you to do from today is practice that windshield wiper motion. Literally just sit here and practice lightly hitting the hats. Not hitting hard, just lightly hitting. Just floating the stick back and forth. You can even do this air playing. Just air playing, going like this. I'll link the video about artificial rebound. Um, because that's that's a key prerequisite. If you're having trouble with this, that artificial rebound lesson is going to help. And then practice incorporating the left hand into that. And just practice getting those to work together like that. It's kind of just a simple hand-to-hand -hand coordination thing. And then practice a basic money beat. And then practice moving out to here. Get comfortable finding this spot. Just figure out what works, what's comfortable, and build that into your muscle memory so you always know where to reach right there. All right, so question for you. Tell me in the comments, which of these methods do you like more? And really my question for you is, are you willing to try both? Are you willing to test out both of these? Because they each work fantastically in different scenarios. I like the Aaron Sterling method, but I don't wanna use that unless I absolutely need to. I'd rather stay right here because it's more comfortable for my arm. So practice using the windshield wiper motion and then move the right hand out to here when needed. So which of these do you like more? Have you already been employing some of these and maybe you haven't even realized it? Um, do you have any questions about hi-hat placement? I'd love to get a discussion going here in the comments. Let's talk about how to make the tricky hi-hat logistics work. All right, I hope this lesson has been helpful to you. This is the first lesson in a three lesson series, by the way. Up next, next week, we're gonna be talking about how to keep effortless left foot time in your groove. So we're gonna be shifting our focus from the hands to the left foot and getting that tied in and coordinated. And then after that, we're gonna talk about how to play fast hi-hat barks with an underrated hack where hi-hat barks are like that kind of thing. Really quick open notes. We're gonna talk about how to tie that into a groove so that you sound super funky, super groovy. It's gonna be a lot of fun. This three lesson series here over the next couple of weeks. So I will see you next week where we start talking about the left foot. Know that you can do this, you can work this stuff, you can master the drums, even if you're coming into this a total beginner. Hope this video has been helpful to you. Stay non-glamorous. I'll see you next time.